Okay, we've got Spider-Man Web of Fire from Blue Sky Software, the very same developer responsible for Jurassic Park and Vector Man, both on Genesis. It was the last game released for 32X in North America after Sega had publicly abandoned the unit. Because of this, very few copies were made available and received little press upon release. I remember a time when nobody, I mean nobody, wanted this thing, but no longer. Recently, a factory sealed copy sold for almost 800 bucks on eBay. Good lord, the cartridge alone typically sells for $200. I'm not even kidding, it's complete madness. A madness I will never ever indulge in. I had to settle for an EverDrive for this review. I'm fairly certain this is how most players will ever experience this game. Not because it's hard to find, but it's too fucking expensive. Just so you know, I'm not a big Spider-Man fan. I don't hate it, okay? It's just not my thing. I review Web of Fire with zero bias. So, how's the game? Yeah, it's average, like painfully so. Before we get into that, here's the plot. Hydra's holding New York City hostage by trapping its citizens within some sort of energy shield, so Spidey Pants needs to take out a few generators and beat ass. That shield reminds me of that crappy artificial ozone layer from Highlander 2, The Quickening. That's not a good thing. Obviously, it's a typical side-scrolling action game. You punch, kick, and web-sling your way through six stages like New York, a power plant, George Washington Bridge, an oil refinery, and so on. Of course, they're all littered with a veritable fuck-ton of generic-looking enemies for you to best. They may have appeared in the comics, though I'm not entirely sure, nor do I care. None of them stand out for me. Fisticuffs are serviceable at best. It grows tiresome before you pass the first stage. Sling them, tap the B button a few times, then proceed. Probe droids can provide more challenge for they double as obstacles in many instances, and these odd fish things can be mildly irritating. Otherwise, enemies are laughable. Even the bosses suck, the few I encountered at least. Dragon Man's the first boss you'll face, and you take him down like any other Hydra agent. Lame. Regardless, you do get some help. In the first stage, you'll find Daredevil. Free him, collect some Daredevil tokens, then you can call upon the man without fear during the game. How do you call him, though? Well, A is web, B is attack, and C is jump. You'd think it would be something simple, like pressing A and B together, but no, you gotta pause the game and select Daredevil. I've never seen this done in any other game. Why is this even necessary? Worse yet, the game is one player, so you can forget about a Spider-Man Daredevil team-up. Bleh. The levels are okay as far as the layout's concerned. Some provide alternate routes. You can either hop over these flame barriers or take to the sky. Either choice will present a challenge, but the option is welcome. It gives players some much needed variety. However, the lack of checkpoints is most vexing. Many times I've been within arm's reach of the goal only to cock things up last minute and start all over. It's bollocks. Jesus, I really need to lay off the BBC. Overall, the gameplay is dull. By the time I made it to the Washington Bridge, I just wanted to burn through this mess and be done with it. That's bad. Another sore spot is the graphics. The character animations are decent, though they don't gel with the backgrounds. It looks like a shitty cut and paste job in Microsoft Paint. I don't mean to be an ass, but it just looks rough. Compare it to Vector Man or even Jurassic Park. They look way more impressive, and they're fucking Genesis games. I especially hate the perspective with these buildings. The adventures of Batman and Robin tackled this problem with greater technical flourish. And again, that's Genesis. It's not like 32X couldn't provide stunning 2D visuals. Oh, don't believe me? Look at Knuckles Chaotix or Tempo. Fucking gorgeous. Web of Fire came later, yet it looks worse. I don't get it. Even the sound is half-assed. Sound effects are recycled from Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, that's the same scream. That, and the music's kind of bland. The main title track is cool, but the New York stage sounds like some Genesis soundtrack as played through an At Games retro console. I'm serious, it's a real letdown. 
All right, tell me, would you blow $900 on this? Would you even spend 200 bucks for a cartridge? Oh, I'm betting I can answer for you. Allow me. Fuck no! I've been pretty harsh, yes, but I will say this. Web of Fire is playable. That's more than I can say for City of Angels of all the fucking games. Long and short, don't take out a second mortgage to buy this shit. If you happen to find it in a garage sale for $10, go for it. That or sell it on eBay for an ungodly amount of money and buy a couple of great Saturn games instead. So, what's next? <laughs> 